my question is, do you have recommendations for getting buy-in from the C-suite, from the CEOs, CFOs, CTOs to do that? Are there specific ways over time that you've learned how to communicate with these type of individuals to get them to buy into something like this? Yeah, well, I can tell you what has worked for me and every situation is unique, but what the first thing is that going to the the C-suite with this is a really good idea. That's that's the best way to build support for it. And I think the the other way that sometimes is appealing because it's it's lower stakes is to grassroots build support on the team. There's nothing wrong with building support on the team, but it's a lot more powerful if you get the big boss to say, hey, I, I want you all to do this. I want to do this right. as an experiment. Yeah. And, and I think that th- that's so much more powerful and you need the big boss's involvement in the design sprint. That's one of the key ingredients is that, that the decider, as we call it, is involved. Mm-hmm. That, you know, you really are best off if you could just go straight to the, straight to the top and say, here's what I think we should do. Uh, will you please let us experiment with this. That's one part of it. I think you can frame it as an experiment and that may be helpful. Uh, mm. Executives, any kind of an organiza- organizational like you know, leader, whatever, like most of the time in organizations, when we do something new, we're like throwing a switch. Like we're going to do it this way now forever. <laughs> right. This is a new policy. And we're adopting this new framework. We're adopting this new thing. And it's just like, oh my God, that's scary. Uh, yeah. And people get fatigued of new, new things, new frameworks, another new thing. So there's naturally resistance to it. One thing that's cool about a design sprint, it's just one week and it doesn't affect anything you do before. It doesn't have to change the way you right. work after. You know, I hope it will I hope it'll have influences in people's work after. But it's not, you're not taking on a new religion with it. You're just saying, well, we're just going to spend one week doing this other thing. Yeah. So that's Time a good, I think- it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like framing it as an experiment is, is, could be helpful depending on if you think there's, there's sort of jargon fatigue or framework fatigue in your organization, (laughs) but really look, the key to pitching this to, uh, to a business leader for me has been to start off and just say, like, can you tell me, I'm trying to help you out. Like, can you tell me what's going on in the business? What, what's important to you right now? And really like what's keeping you up at night? Um, and, and if you work on a particular project, you know, this person and this person's purview, you could say like, what's keeping you up about the Frobaz project? Like, what is it about that that's, that's stressing you out? And, and so you start off and if you could just like listen to what's going on. And I think the first question I ask myself is, is a design sprint actually going to help them? You know, mm-hmm. um, if, if they're talking to me, like that's about all I can do to help them is do a design sprint. So, you know, but I don't want to force somebody to do a design sprint if it's not the right <laughs> yeah. time, if they're not into it, like, yeah, it's, you know, um, cause it's not going to, that's just not going to be a good outcome. So doing a design sprint for its own sake is this is not worth it. So the first question is like, does it fit? And if it fits, what is the pain that they have that it can alleviate? One thing that's hard about selling the design sprint to people trying to convince them that it might be a good idea is that if you have experienced one, if you've done it, if you're sold on the process yourself, then you might realize that there are like a million different good things that come from it. There are all kinds of good things that happen. And, you know, it can be hard to list them all even, but (laughs) my gosh, we're, we're, we're being more, uh, inclusive of the people on our, on our team. We're respecting each other more. We're getting this different kind of data that we almost never get. We're testing our product in a different way. We're sort of testing our hunches in a different way. It's like a super accelerated, like lean startup kind of thing because we're, we're making the most minimal of minimum viable products and putting it right. in front of customers. And even just breaking up the routine. Like as breaking a, up the routine. The as you talked level. about like this, this notion of like, almost it's almost like a retreat, like what it does for, uh, for our team's togetherness is a really big deal. You know, um, it, it can be extremely energizing for people. You can go on and on with all these things that are really great about it. But if you go on and on and on to <laughs> your boss, like they're probably, their eyes are going to glaze over. They don't care. But the key thing is like, there might be one thing that is really keeping them up at night that the design sprint can help them solve. And what I've found is it's usually that we can make a prototype really fast. So if this project feels like it's daunting, it feels like maybe it's going a bit slow. Maybe we're almost paralyzed because there's so many options. In one week, I could get you a prototype. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to say we're going to test it, but one week to a prototype is a really big deal. And the second selling point is often alignment. If there's a lot mm. of different teams who are involved in this and it's kind of challenging to get everybody rowing in the same direction. Mm-hmm. The design sprint, you give me a, Give me a week. I can get people all involved, all starting this together. Yeah. So everybody is like, feels like they're part of it and, yep. and it's aligned and we aren't, we aren't doing politics for months. Yeah. I like the way you framed that. It's like, because I think just in general with kind of persuasion with humans, it's like sometimes the laundry list approach of just, here's like a thousand things that yeah. it's great at is good. Maybe we're looking at a book, right? You can laundry list a thousand things and yeah. it keeps the reader reading. But then, yeah, if you're just trying to convince one person who maybe is busy or something. It's like, all right, just give the best two most persuasive things kind of thing. Yeah. 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 And then I didn't come to that because I'm so good at persuading people, but just because that's the only thing people seem to care about is the prototype or the alignment. And they, they will understand the rest when they experience it, but they're never, nobody's ever going to want to do a design sprint because they're really dying to do more customer (laughs) research. You know, that's not, that's not going to do it. And nobody's going to do it because you could say like, finally, uh, a recipe where we can, you know, have more efficient, uh, inclusive conversations that involve everybody on the team. Like they're just, that is probably not going to get people to say, yeah, let's stop what we're doing for a week. That that's expensive and hard and sounds crazy. Yeah. hundred percent. So so you should line it up with what helps them with the business. Yeah. How about you bring up the lean startup? How about for smaller groups, smaller communities, maybe even, you know, we have college students, college students trying to start something out uh, yeah. with a company or a small group. How would you recommend that they could potentially use this? And then uh, to add on to that question too, in today's, you know, world that we're in, are there new online ways that you also would recommend or are integrating currently? Yeah. Uh, well, for the first part, I mean, I think, that no matter what kind of a team you're a part of, and in fact, even if you're not part of a team, I, I hear stories uh, pretty regularly of people doing design sprints on their own, you know, <laughs> right. which, is, which is hard. It has its own challenges, but, um, but if you search for one person design sprint, you'll find stories that people have published about how, how they've done it. And, and, to and compartmentalize the decider portion of your brain, yes. I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> multiple right. personalities. Right. Multiple personalities, right. Um, the hardest part about that, about working on your own, is like for me, being really distractible, like I, I need the peer pressure of the other people in the room to keep me mm. focused, you know. And so if you're on your own, you, you really have to do it yourself. But uh, yeah, but you know, it doesn't matter if a team is, um, if if it's a, a team in a in a nonprofit, if it's a team and uh, I've worked with a team in the government, you know, it, there, what you make for a prototype and how you test it, it might look differently if you're if you're doing this at a school and you want to make, you know, something about the the way your class is run better. You have an idea of a problem you want to solve there. The, the prototype and the test may be totally different. It may be that we're going to try a new class schedule and we're going to run it for a day and mm-hmm. uh, we're going to, you know, survey people at the end or interview them. Um, but the, the rest of the format is going to be the same because the design sprint is really just a problem solving framework. We have a big challenge. We're going to lay out what's going on there. That's the map. We're going to come up with competing solutions for it. That's the sketch. We're going to put detail behind those. So we know like really how this would work and we're going to decide which are the best and we're going to try to figure out how we make this as realistic as possible this week. And then, and then we put it into action and we see how it goes. And if you think of it that way, then it's possible, I think, to apply this to all kinds of situations. So, so I definitely think it's possible. Um, Second part of your question is about doing this over video remotely. And obviously uh, that's the world we live in now. And I think it's the world we will live in forever now because, um, you know, I I certainly look forward to seeing people in person again and doing these in person, but there's going to be more remote work now, more work that happens over video for sure. Uh, So before COVID, I was really reluctant to do any design sprints over video. There are uh, so many <laughs> challenges with it, but um, yeah. some of those challenges have lessened uh, greatly. You know, um, people are just more comfortable with video in general. Video has gotten yeah. better. And uh, so more people have access to 
good video at their home for whatever they've had. They've either, you know, had to set it up or the tech has gotten better, you know, Mm -hmm. just generally that side of the equation is better. And there are also much better tools now than there used to be. So um, tools like Miro, Mural, uh, Envision Freehand, there's a lot of different whiteboard apps that you can use and, and um, they all have templates for design sprints and, um, you know, you just have to find like a good one, but we actually put together a whole resource. If you go to the sprintbook.com slash remote, there's like oh, a nice. free guide that sort of, sort of accompanies okay. the book and uh, explains how to adapt to the different steps to do them over video. And I'm sure that if there's ever like a second edition of the book, it'll talk a lot about how to do it. Cause I do think this is the new world. Yeah. Well, breaking off into individual, you know, breaking off from the group into individuals, is pretty easy with the, <laughs> the new paradigm, yeah. but there are advantages. There are totally advantages to the new paradigm. I mean, you, you, as you said, like you can do, when you do work on your own and you're in your own space and you can actually like shut off the screen and not have to look at everybody, like that could be really good for deep thinking, you know, that's gonna be really yeah. good. Yeah, and, we did get uh, a, a wrench thrown into the world with this telepresence thing, but it is cool that it's accelerating it and who knows what yeah. uh, kind of new tools we'll get soon. Totally, yeah. And those whiteboards, when the sprint is over, you have this like artifact of the whole thing that right. you can hang on to forever. And that, that's really cool that it's much harder to recreate that from photos of the room and what was what we wrote on the wall and what we you know wrote on paper. You, you already have it collected and organized and that's really cool. And it's also easier to do customer interviews over video. You can recruit people wherever they are, not just the people who are near your office. And you can- right you can talk to them in the comfort of their own home where they, they may feel more likely to be um, blunt and honest with you than, yeah. than when they're, they're, they're a visitor in your space. And, yeah. and that's really powerful too, because that's what you want. 